Welcome, soul family. Welcome to the seventh phase of this moon phase reading. We are in the last quarter moon. Today in real time is Saturday, June 10th, 2023. And if you add that together, June is 6, 10. If you take away the zero, it's 1. That's 7. 2023 also comes to 7. 7 plus 7 is 14. And 1 and 4 is 5. So today we are going to talk about transition and forgiveness through change and transformation of self. So get cozy. Get your notes ready, get your pen ready, record. Well, I guess it is recording. That's so funny because when I'm doing readings for people, I say that I'm like, if you want to record this, record this, drink some water. Mm. When I looked down, it was 109, which is also the number 19, which if you put one and nine together is 10 is completion, which we are at. We are nearing completion of this cycle, not just in the moon phase, but in general. We are seeing more and more day by day that new earth is really here, that spirit does have our back. And our new mantra today, and you can use it for the rest of your life. You can use it right now just to help you gain your trust back for spirit and yourself. But our mantra today is I trust you spirit. And they literally did I period, trust period, you period, spirit period. And then they put in parentheses, period, dot, 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 the end. Like, you don't have to ask. You don't have to, like, all you need to do is say, I trust you, spirit. Also, for my scryers out there, they, I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, this took such a long time to put together. I had a completely different view of, like, what I thought it was going to be. Um, but in the end, when all of a sudden, when it clicked together, I was like, oh my gosh. And for the scryers, if you don't see it, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with you if you don't see it. Okay. But for those of you who scry, you may see up here, this looks like an elephant. Do you see the elephant? You see the eye, even the tusk, like there's like these tusks almost like their tusks are growing out of control. And this part feels like their ear, part of their ear. It's really wild the way this came together. There was a lot of mermaid energy. As you can see before you, there's like little bits and pieces. In fact, I don't know if they'll let me. Um, ooh, well, hello. <laughs> I was just going to come in here and show you. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but this is one of my new favorite. Let me see if I go over here. Yes, this is one of my new favorite shells on this beach where we go. These shells are incredible and um, they are so blue and Spirit asked me to do natural lighting today, but I think you can even see that. Here, let me see if I put some water on it. Maybe you'll be able to see it. Oh, here we go. Lovely. Yes. Look at how blue that is. Do you see how blue that is? It's so beautiful. I am in love with these shells and I keep finding broken pieces of them. And, uh, and so I've been collecting them and bringing them together because you know what, when they all get together, they look beautiful. They don't look like broken pieces, right? They look like a symphony of beauty. And I feel at this point, this is what spirit is wanting us to transition and what they want us to transition out of is fear. And what they want us to uh, transition into is forgiveness. Forgiveness for self. Forgiveness for others. But true forgiveness, not just like, I forgive you. You know what I mean? You know, when you're a kid, I don't know if your parents did this, but like my siblings and I, like, you know, we fought really, really bad sometimes. And, you know, your parents are like, tell so-and-so you're sorry, you know. And you're like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, but you're not really sorry. Because <laughs> if you're really sorry, you'd be like, I'm really sorry, you know, brother, sister, whatever. <laughs> you know, like, I'm really sorry, sibling, you know, um, right? <laughs> but it's not always like that, is it? 
So the thing with forgiveness is we get caught up in our ego that pulls us down to the undertow, to the underbelly of the water, our emotions, the darkness. As you see before you today, we are working with the Star Spinner Tarot. I'm so excited to work with this deck. Honestly, it's interesting to me. Um, I can't promise I'm not going to cry, but I'm going to try really hard not to cry because there's only one more reading. If you didn't watch the other readings, we're done. I'm done. Um, I don't know exactly the capacity. All I know, I may, I may just be going on a sabbatical. Uh, I may, uh, come back a month from now, six months from now, a year from now. I may never come back. I may put a video out that says, Hey, uh, I'm following me over here. So you may want to like, and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that when I do post again, then you'll know. But, um, you know, those of you who have known me, you know, I change and shift all the time. I am a very powerful <laughs> shapeshifter. And that is part of my magic is that I'm a shapeshifter and I go from place to place and town to town with my fairy dust and I go around and I just kind of drop shit around and give people food for thought, you know, kind of thing. And, um, and then I go on my merry way until I work on something else. And every time I bring something to you, it's something I'm working on as well. So, um, I don't know, but I will say this, that I was starting to get kind of sad because, uh, I am like, if this is it, if I'm never, ever going to do any like online readings like this again, I thought I have over 30 decks now. <laughs> I'm like, I wonder what the last ones will be. You know, I really, and I never, you know, spirit doesn't, well, sometimes I want to ask and I get, I ask for hints and they're like, no, 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 don't you want to be surprised? <laughs> and it, a part of me wants to be surprised. The other part of me is the child that's like, no, I want to know now. <laughs> And so I'm really feeling all of our, all of our fairy and playful energy. So thank you for bringing that here today. Our giggles, our bubbles, bubbles, the fairy, bubbles, the, the, the fairy. That's what she's here is to, to, you know, bring the fairy dust and sparkle it around. And, um, so that's what my job has been. And so I, with grace and gratitude, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here and supporting me and yourselves. Really, you've been supporting yourselves in this channel. I've always felt like this channel was for all of us, not just for me. And um, because I've learned so much and because of you, um, you know, I've, I've just gained more than I ever thought I ever could. And so thank you. Um, today may be the last of this. Oh, when I looked down, it was 7.53 and then 54. So if that means anything, and it's interesting because we're in the seventh moon phase and 53 would be eight and 54 would be nine. So it could be, yeah, they're just saying it's just the progression of things, right? I mean, when I called in people today, you guys, I called in so many different energies and entities. We have got like the Galactic Council. We've got mermaids. We've pretty much anything that's ever been created that's awesome is here. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. And spirit has like been really like drawing me to like watch things. Um, uh, I just watched this mini series from 2006 called Fallen that was um, with Paul Wesley and um, oh gosh, my husband's favorite actor. I like him too. Why can't I think of his name? doesn't matter. Um, the Walking Dead. Get no, not Walking Dead. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, Brian Cranston. Thank you, spirit. <laughs> Uh, just uh, actually, there's a lot of cool actors in it, but it's, it was just a really cool, interesting story about this redeemer. And it's about the Nephilim and the Nephilim are a creature, um, an entity that is born of human and angel. And it, and then I, I sat with spirit about that. And I thought, my gosh, is that what we are? right? You, me, those of you who are in this tribe, right? We come from different places. We are the wanderers, the warriors, and the wanderers. You know, we are walking through this life with our eyes wide open. We understand that there is something more, something bigger, something better. We know we come from something more, something bigger, something better. And the more we stay in a high vibration, the more we laugh and stay in that bubbles frequency and call on bubbles. I am not kidding you. I am not kidding you. Um, I, some, some believe I've worked with some very beautiful shaman teacher, light workers that um, believe that I am bubbles 
or I'm some like version of her. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I'm like, I don't know. Um, but I do feel like they want me to bring this forward because um, I worked with the cottonwood the other day and oh my gosh, you guys, it's so real. It's so real. It's so fuzzy. We'll talk about it later. But anyway, yeah, work with the fairies, but especially work with bubbles to raise your vibration, to bring you more laughter and joy, to not take things so seriously. I've been getting that from Spirit. They had me do the shorts. I don't know when they're going to have me put it out. And also, for all I know, they may still have me do shorts for you guys, or this last week, we're just going to like power shorts. You know what I mean? Like, because I was going through and man, they've been having me go through some stuff. And let me tell you, I am going through some stuff when I go through my stuff for you guys and for me, because it's just making me realize like just how much we've grown and how far we've come and how proud I am of all of us and that we are making big strides and we're understanding things and we're looking forward. We're not under, we're not looking backwards because we're understanding that looking backwards is only there for the lessons or, you know, if we get the trigger, it's to work through it and then let it go. It's not to stay in it for months on end or to live in it in the, you know, um, woe is me energy. No, no, no. 1108 and 1109, right? We are here for right 10 and 11, all those ones, all those angels across the boards, if you had those numbers together, because we are not, <laughs> we all live in a yellow submarine, a yellow submarine, a yellow submarine, because we're weirdos, right? Like John Lennon, like, you know, after John Lennon uh, broke up from the Beatles, all of them really get into their music because they all went their own way, like spiritually, but John Lennon, um, George Harrison, you know, um, I definitely feel like uh, Paul McCartney did as well, but I feel, I'm not calling Paul McCartney a sellout or a commercial. I'm just saying that I feel like he was more reserved in certain ways and that's okay. That's who he was. 1154, then 1155. Oh yes. Um, while I was preparing for this, uh, all of these awesome meditations came through and angel numbers. So 1133, 1144, and 1155. And I'm like doing my shit, you guys. Like, I'm not looking at my fucking phone. I'm not looking for it. It just like, you know, when I looked down, it was 1213. I kept seeing that too, which is my birthday. Um, I kept seeing that everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Yes, it's Taylor Swift's birthday too. I know, right? Isn't that crazy? Uh, she's my birthday sister. I know we're meant to meet because if we're not, like, then we're just... Sometimes when I watch her, I'll cry because I'm like, oh my God, she's exactly like what I wanted to be when I wasn't, you know, I was brave enough, but like, you know, people weren't, I'm, I'm almost 50, well, not almost, but my half birthday is coming. So I'm 51 and a half almost on the 13th of June. Um, and uh, beautiful Vesta, I want you to research Vesta, V as in Victor, E, S as in Sam, T, Samantha. Oh, Samantha's back to Sex in the City. I knew it. Um, <laughs> thank you, spirit. Okay. You get the drift. Okay. So Vesta is a divine energy, feminine, divine. I'm going to leave it there. I have tons of notes that I could share with you right now, but they're not going to have me share with you. So I don't know what's going to happen. The last reading, I don't know if it's going to be a moon day on the 12th or on the 13th because it will be my half birthday. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. I don't want to say for sure. All I can tell you is that I've been trying to stay in a high vibration because I went to the darkest, ugliest place the other day with my husband and um, found out some really harsh shit about myself and things that we had to look out, you know, about ourselves and our relationship and each other it was very healing. Um, I'm so blessed, honestly. I really am. I'm so blessed to have such a beautiful uh, soul and partner to walk with. And man, we fought. We fought hard. Eight years, man. We fought really, really hard. Um, and trust me, there were people in there that I thought were the love of my life. There were two people in there that came back into my life during that eight year period. I'm just going to share this with you really quickly. Okay. We're going to be all over. There's a lot of things we're going to talk about today. If for any reason, you know, the drill for those of you who've been here, um, I've got plenty of room on my phone. I'm playing with the light. Um, but if for any reason it breaks off into two that, you know, if you're meant to follow the breadcrumbs to two, the link will be in the description box below and also in the comments, uh, pinned comments. If, um, if not, then, you know, just be like, oh, no, I got what I, I needed. You know, that happens. Last night I, I watched this really cool reading and it was like three different things. And I knew the beginning one like totally resonated. The second one didn't. I said, should I move forward or stick around? They're like, nope. I'm like, I'm out. Because, you know, they're mass messages for everybody, especially these when we're not doing a pick a reading. This is a mass message to all of us. It's going to hit 
all of us differently in our intuition and in, in our gut and our mind and our body and our soul. So um, with that being said, we're going to talk about sexuality. Um, you know, we're going to talk about how blessed we are and gratitude and how much gratitude really does make a difference. Okay. So spirit, was there something else? I feel like they were like lining me from one thing to the other to the other. Right now we have earth, air, fire, and water because the cotton flies up into the air. So we're going to use the cotton as our representation of air. This is the cotton wood and they're not having me grab my book. So I want you to research it on your own if it feels good. It is, yes, it is literally that soft. It's so soft. It's so floaty. <laughs> it really is floaty. You know what I mean? Like it's just floaty and, and wonderful. And that's nature that comes naturally from nature. You know, so, um, if you're somebody who wants to make natural garments, maybe move somewhere that has a lot of cottonwood. We went to the Elwha River on the Olympic Peninsula and there was so much cotton everywhere. I wanted to just like, the ferns were like so massive. If you've never been to the Pacific Northwest, do yourself a favor and do it, especially go to the Olympic Peninsula. It's magic. I feel very blessed to live here. Um, it's where I gained my strength, really, honestly. The ancestors are here. There's a massive portal here. The mermaids are here. Like, I feel all of it. Um, but I felt this energy when I just, I, I was like, this is nature. I'm like, what do we need to kill birds for to make down? Now, don't get me wrong. I have a lot of down stuff. And I have blessed and thanked the birds. And from now on, I'm like, I don't know if I could do that again. Because I know what they do to these poor birds and it's really gross. And so, um, you know, I can't be this like, you know, vegan, whatever. And that's by choice because my body doesn't like meat or dairy. That's it. You eat what's good for you. No judgment. I swear to you. I really do. Okay. However, all I ever ask is that you source your food and, and really find out, you know, how animals were treated because anything of an animal that you put inside of your body, if it went through trauma, which guaranteed when it died, it did, um, their bodies, our bodies release a toxin when we're in fear and it's like a poison to our system. So you're eating the poison from an animal when it dies. And I just want you to think about that. Okay. Do more research on it. I'm not doing it to be a dick and scare you or whatever. It's just, you know, if you align with animals or you feel a kinship, you may want to start thinking about that and, you know, growing your own food or going towards, you know, that kind of life that's more natural because that's who we are. If you're in this tribe, we thrive in natural, natural environments, natural fibers on our skin, natural, you know, things on our skin, inside of our bodies. Why do you think so many people, they're linking so many um, cancers to these big box companies that know they were poisoning us? You think they fucking care? No. Like, honestly, I was thinking about this and I, I was thinking, you know, I think I want to start something to petition if it, I'm sure it probably already is, but I need to join the bandwagon for people who want Tide and like those kind of like products to be banned. They should be illegal. There is no reason why we can't, you know, source the things that we need and we don't need a shitload of soap. You know, people washed their garments for years just in rivers and on rocks without soap. You know, there's a lot of natural healing that we all need. The elephant is looking at me again. So work with the elephant spirit animal. Now I'm going to segue into the dolphin. And in the comments section below and in the description box, they'll probably have me put it in both places. But either way, please, I implore you. Take an hour of your life because I think it's 51 minutes and 15 seconds, which is also the number 12, which keeps coming up everywhere for me. And two, two, twos. I know a lot of you have been saying that as well. Um, and interesting that we're in the seventh moon phase, but five today's a, a, a five day, you know, with the date, which is about change and transformation and seven and five is 12, which is also the number three. Um, and look at there's three entities on the star spinner tarot. What? <laughs> so work with the number three, but also, you know, these animals want to speak with us and talk with us uh, for a reason. So I beg you the next time that you can really give yourself an hour of freedom with 
without any interruptions, follow the link in the comment sections that is pinned of the Dolphin Serenade. And I want you to listen to it on your headphones if possible, if not in a place where you're not going to hear traffic or your kids, you know, playing or whatever, you know, uh, make sure that obviously your children are supervised, that you're, everyone's in a safe place, you know, all those good things. But wherever you are, maybe you want to go down to the beach. And even though, you know, you could hear the waves, you want to hear this meditation while you're looking at the ocean. You know, I would highly recommend uh, it still maybe just closing your eyes because this meditation is going to take you all over. In the community section, I'm going to uh, post uh, screenshots of things that Spirit had me take. If you just, if you go to the community section, it's the tabs up on the top, go to the community section. And um, when you see it, you can actually tap on the picture to make it bigger because a lot of times uh, Spirit has me take screenshots of things, but then they have me save the timestamp or the, excuse me, the times that I watched it, the percentage on my phone, the time where the song was at, the, you know, how many minutes the song is, you know, there's so much, there's so much numerology around us. If you found yourself here, especially if you're watching this today, 2111, hello, speak at five. Oh, right. You're not crazy. Crazy is not a bad word, by the way. Crazy can be awesome. You're like, you're, dude, you're like crazy awesome, right? Like, like out of control, awesome. Cause crazy is like out of control, but sometimes we can be out of control. So it doesn't have to be like, you're crazy. And trust me, I grew up with that, right? You know, I'm going to be 51 and a half. So I've lived five decades and I've, I've had this really, I feel so blessed to have the experience to share with you. And those of you who are older than me, right, that you even have more experiences to share with all of us. That's why we respect our elders. You know, trust, trust me when I tell you, I don't respect all of my elders. I respect them for the, the, the you know, life that they led, that, um, that they, you know, did this, that, or whatever. But I, that doesn't mean I have to respect their behavior or the way they treat me. You know, I've seen elders who are so, you know, over the top, right wing, you know, like whatever, like just the things that come out of their mouth. I'm just like, dude, you, okay, you need to take it down a notch, right? Cause like, that's a long fucking time ago, you know? We are in the biggest form of slavery we've ever been in, ever, because people are slaves to all different things. They're slaves to their fucking Doritos. They're slaves to their fucking phone. You know, they're slaves to these readings. Tell me what to do so I don't have to think for myself. No, I, I've always wanted to be fucking real with you guys and like put out into the world that like, this is your journey. I'm just here to put down the breadcrumbs and we're walking together. We know each other. We've known each other in another life, in the future, in the past, in the present. We know each other. We're connected. I'm here to just be your muse. I'm literally your mouthpiece for yourself, for your higher self. That's all my job is here. So this dolphin serenade, I think it says something even on the cover, like read the whole like, you know, picture. But the, I think it says something like um, meditation music for the mind, body and soul. And I'm telling you, it really is that now I have, I, I know I've heard other songs from that album, but that exact song, the dolphin medicine, there'll be a link with it or the dolphin serenade. It's unreal. I mean, there were times I had to keep catching or checking my phone 2338. I had to keep literally looking at my phone because I thought the music had changed. And then I was like, oh yeah, I forgot. It's, you know, 51 minutes, drink some water. 23, 49, 23 is fire, change and transformation, 49 is 13 and the goddess, a lot of shit's happening, new earth's here and we are ready to go. So without further ado, I trust you spirit. You know why? Because we've been possessed and programmed to fear, to be and live fearfully. And spirit said, cut that out. Now, cut that out now. And it's really interesting because I just realized, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this, but hold on, because I wrote with a light pen, but I know they said cut that out now, but look at, does that say could? Was it C-O-U-D? 
I don't know if that means anything to you guys. Maybe even this way it means something to you. I don't know. Maybe you're looking at some other words, but that was kind of a trip for me because I, I was downloading it, you know, but sometimes when I'm downloading, it's like, you know, what they call the, so I'm going to put, uh, I'm only going to put a line through it because it might be for somebody else someday. You know, I know this, I don't mean this to sound vain, but I always wonder like, where are my notebooks going to end up? You know what I mean? Like, who's going to have this notebook someday? Like, are these just going to like, you know, whatever, <laughs> like who's going to have them? I have so many now. And, um, and, and so when I write things down, uh, I don't want to all the time, but it's because spirit wants me to. So I think someday somebody, maybe they'll find it on the, in a desert somewhere in like 50 years from now. Wouldn't that be fucking awesome? 25, 28. Um, very interesting. Okay. So also for some of you ha who have not watched the waning Gibius reading spirit is saying, please go watch it. It was the reflect and release energy. It was the dark mirror Oracle. You can't miss it. It was like a big picture of like the dark mirror, like that they had me, you know, do it that way. Um, and, uh, it was about reverence about having deep respect for someone or something. And I'm feeling like for some of our tribe, like you're not having reverence, you're not having respect for yourself. You know, I look at this, this goddess, this angel different all the time. And right now today, she looks really sad to me. And before we started this, I was like, please, can I smoke more cannabis? Cause I just, I felt really depressed. And, and they were like, no, this is where everybody is. You know, like it's, it's an ending. We're at the end of something really big. And Venus, uh, went into Leo, uh, uh just a few days ago on Monday on a moon day on the 5th. And um, it's going to be there until October. It's going to have a little bit of a slide back retrograde, but there's a lot going on also for the Leos in our tribe or those who have really um, heavy Leo placement. I, I urge you when, when I am done with this channel for now or whenever, uh, when I am done, which it'll be the waning crescent reading will be my last reading. And I believe they're going to have me do some other stuff. And I will tell you that probably in the very last reading. Um, but they just wanted me to throw out there that when I'm done with this or whatever, seek to work more with yourself and study your chart, get into astrology, start to learn more about yourself. And if you're already into astrology, then it's, it's like for you to either bring it out into the masses, you know, um, because I, I feel if I'm being honest, I almost feel maybe it's just what goes into my orbit. But I feel like we have a lot of readers, like card readers, tarot readers, things like that. But I feel like we need more astrologers. And, you know, if astrology, numerology, numbers, if that stuff comes easy to you, um, I've spoke about this before. Like one of my friends growing up, like she just was a whiz with numbers and she was like a master accountant. She can do it with her fucking eyes shut. You know, when people would talk about how, how cannabis, uh, you know, fucks people up and ruins their lives, I'm like, maybe it depends on how you use it. I'm like, she was was one of the smartest people I knew. She was like at the top of like her game at one of the best like CPA firms in Chicago. And she would be fucking high off her ass every day because she's so smart and her brain goes so fast with numbers and everything else. It's like for her to be there and be around people, it takes a lot for her, you know? And, um, I don't know what she's doing now. It's been a long time since I spoke with her, but, uh, but I'll tell you something. I, I started to realize like, yeah, don't let anybody tell you like who you are, who you're not, what works for you, what doesn't work for you, what's your medicine. You know, um, my husband, he works with all natural plant medicines and, um, you know, things that really expand your mind and your imagination. And it's been really cool to watch his journey while he does that. I feel like this wants to come back over here by the candle. Um, and so, you know, don't deny yourself or others what your natural gift is. You know, what's your natural gift? I feel like we're coming down from the elephant for a little bit. You know, what is your natural gift? What makes you feel good, right? Like what makes you happy? What makes you want to get up in the morning? I feel like we're going to kind of like break this down a little bit because we're going into the deck. Okay. Oh, you guys, I'm so excited to see what spirit brings us today. Okay, so with that being said, we've been possessed and programmed to fear. So, you know, if you are someone who found yourself in this orbit of these people, this beautiful tribe of people that I call family, you are my soul family. Welcome to the new people. Welcome back to those who keep coming back. You know, we are connected for a reason. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not crazy. Did you see a star in this rock? A shooting star? Because I saw a shooting star in this rock. 
I was having the worst day and um, just crying because I'm going through a massive change and transformation. And it's been hard for me to like really vocalize it with my husband, with anybody, really. It's been hard for me to um, even those of you who know who've been in my orbit a really long time. Uh, whatever I'm going through is nothing I've ever been through. So I can't compare it to anything. I can't say, oh, you know, this is like that one time because there is no such thing. And you may be going through the same thing, right? Where you're like, I used to be able to do this or I used to be able to do that. Or I know I'm sensitive, but you know, blah, blah, blah. Hold on. Okay. Did you see that piece of cedar that was sitting by the rock? This is it. Actually, everything before you, except for the crystals, are all things that I gathered from my hike and my day this really, really, really tough day that I had. Um, and what I realized, the reason why my day was so tough was that even though I'm excited to release and let go of this channel, I also realized how much I have a hard time with letting go of anything. That as much as I preach change and transformation, oh, when I looked down, I was 30, 52. We talked about the number three, right? Because it's semicolon and 52 is seven. Uh, and seven and three is 10. Yeah. But when we come to the ending of something, right, we get that like false illusion. Like we want to hold on to it. We're like, oh my gosh, no, wait, wait, no, I'm not ready for you to go yet. Right. Like it's, it's almost like, you know, when someone dies suddenly, it's like, I'm not ready for you to die. I'm not ready for you to die. Well, if we love someone and want them in our orbit, no one's ever ready for anyone to die. Right. We would have them in our orbit. 3123. We would have them in our orbit all the time. Ooh, three and one is four about balance. And one of the songs, um, I know they're going to have me put it in there because I was really drawn to it. Um, the number four. So I don't know if the four means anything to you guys, but we spoke about that in the Wayne and Gibbous reading as well. I think that was the one we spoke about balance. And I think we worked with the turkey medicine. So, um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot happening all around us. And cleansing the energy really helps but I called on all these energies these earth energies to come in and work with you so you know feel free to you know call out to them um this one feels I feel like this one is coming out so let's see okay this one it's interesting because it came out sideways okay so when it's sideways that means we're going to read the um, upright and the reverse position because that is spirit's way of oh is that a crane um i can't tell if that oh no they're geese or swans they're swans <laughs> oh goodness gracious <gasps> ah! hold on so work with swan medicine and you, maybe you have been working with swan medicine. I know some of us in this tribe we've worked with before. And look at number seven, mm, 3244. Yeah, there's a lot going on. I get it. Uh, the world is a, it's a wonky place right now. Everybody's handling it differently. Some people it's easy to transition and forgive and some people it's not. And so we just have to release and let it go. Let them feel what they want to feel. Everyone is allowed to feel whatever they want to feel. You know, it's not our, um, it's not our place to tell people how to feel, right? So I'm going to go to this and I, I was drawn to the upright right away. So it says, you are at a point where you want to make long-term investments. You have mastered your daily grind and you have the freedom to step back and plan where you might best invest your resources. The seven of coins encourages you to look at the bigger picture and spend time cultivating your resources responsibly. Oh, that's so beautiful. And I almost feel like uh, this back here wanted to, like for some of you, nature is your favorite place, but like you, spirit's like, so why aren't you going there? Oh, I love it. Can I just tell you that I was walking and this very beautiful, perfect little piece of moss, you know, had fallen off this tree and, um, the whole, the whole walk was really magical. I'm not going to lie. It was really magical. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I just knew it wanted to come in here and look at it. It's, it's just, it's just for you and us, like us, this message right now, see how much Gaia spirit, you know, Sandalphon, <laughs> the earth energy and Taurus, the North energy, right? Like, um, and I'm feeling that because we're still in the Taurus moon, even though we're in Gemini, we're still in the Taurus moon and see, she's getting grounded. 
Um, and I feel like the other swans are like totally chilling and like hanging out with her, but like the other one's like taking off. Also, is it just me, but are we missing one? Is she supposed to be the swan? I don't know if I've ever noticed this before, but look, we've got one, two, three, four, five heads, right? Five change and transformation and six, but it's number seven. Where's the seventh swan? I feel like that's what they're trying to say. Like we are the seventh swan and swans. Let me tell you, um, I wasn't sure if we we're going to move this candle and we are, and I'm really excited because I feel like you deserve to have this. We deserve to have this light on us. You are the swan. I am the swan. Listen to the reverse. It says, though you are currently financially stable, you are impatient with your progress. You may be tempted to overspend or invest your resources a little too hastily. No matter how much work you put in, you find yourself a sleeve short in the end. The reverse seven of coins warns you to take more time to analyze your prospects and check your impulses. Do not be pressured into making hasty deals. And it's on page 116, which is also the number eight. So seven, eight, it's like, just keep counting, like keep moving forward. Um, also, I know this is going to sound silly, but I feel like while we're waiting, because this is for all of us, right? This isn't a pick a reading. This is for all of us. So insert your story here. I feel like we are all the swan and look at the star up here, right? And that makes me, I feel like her, um, her whole demeanor kind of gives me the fairy vibe, but then the star on her head makes me feel like the empress or um, like Wonder Woman, you know? And Wonder Woman is a great warrior. And what makes Wonder Woman such a great warrior and where she comes from, right, is the goddess energy of being the observer, being patient, right? It is the female body that carries the baby, right? So she carries, and I know not in all species, but in the human species, it is the divine feminine woman energy that births a body, another body into this world. So, you know, you, they have to wait through the gestation process, you know, and it's anywhere between this many months and that many months. But the typical is like, you kind of would like them to stay nine months, right? So that they're in there, that they're fully ready to go, right? You don't want them to come out earlier because if they do, then there could be complications because they didn't have this or that, you know? Um, and maybe you had a child like that, or it could be you were a child like that. But there could be a fear based around that. Maybe you lost a child, you know? Um, and you want to get pregnant again, or maybe, maybe the child has nothing to do with a baby, like, right. Maybe it's just a metaphor for creativity. Maybe you birthed something, maybe you worked on it for like 30 years and you're like, I don't know. I, I guess it's just never going to happen. But they're like, but what if you looked at it from a different vantage point? What if you sat there for a while and just were the observer hanging out with those swans? Because look at this swan took off right? They took off. They're not waiting for the other ones. They're flying off on their own. That's okay. If that's where that swan feels like they need to be, let them fly, right? But for now, it's like, I feel like we're in the gestation period. We're in the waiting period. Let's see what other messages Spirit has for us. Um, also, don't be pressured into making hasty deals. If you're not ready to do something, then you're not ready to do something. And that's it. That's the end of story. Don't let anything or anyone pressure you into, you know, and I just felt a sinking feeling. Nobody likes confrontation. Trust you me. <clears throat> Drink some water. Also, when we go into that energy, what are we doing? We're bringing that energy to us. So go back into the high vibration and be like, nope, I'm just going to sit over here. I'm not ready to make that decision. I don't care if, you know, who was I watching recently? It was somebody I really liked, actually, and it kind of made me sad when they said it. But they said something like, if I text you and you don't text me back, um, they're like, then basically they're like, you're dead to me. Like, you know, I know you're just sitting there, you know, fucking like taking your time. You don't want to text me back. And I thought, mm, that's interesting because it's really none of anybody's business. Even if they did get your message, maybe they're not ready to talk to you. Maybe that, you know, and um, that's a form of bullying. That's a, you know, so don't let anyone, even yourself, bully you. Um, interesting. The bottom of the card is the moon. I don't know if they're going to have me pull that one. And the top of, oh, shut up. I swear to you on all that is holy. I did not do this, but like one side is the sun. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Okay. And 
it's the way I shuffle them. They're all messed up. <laughs> but look, and the other side is the moon. Hold on, I got to turn it upside down. But isn't that crazy? So um, it could be for some of you, you've been wanting, oh, and the rabbit. Oh, no shit, snap. So rabbits are all about fear, but they're also about fertility. It's on the way you look at the rabbit. And for some of you, you know who you are. We just had a recent meeting on the phone. We had a session and we were talking about that. Wink, wink, you know, dude. Oh, uh, that's fucking rad. Also, um, I don't know what bird that is. Is that a raven? I think that's a raven. Yeah, I'm almost positive that's a raven. So I feel like for some of you work with the raven and work with and ravens are all I and mean, crows, actually all of um, the corvids they're, um they are in the in, that are in the, the corvid family. They're all about magic, right? So work with that. Okay, let's see. I feel like these are, we're going to use them in both ways. Now I'm going to put this beautiful star, since we got the star on the rock, I'm going to put this, the star back there and I'm going to reset this a little bit. Okay, hold on. So holy cannoli, we have the star and they had me put it in reverse. And then this one, I, it was like, they wouldn't even let me look at it. So that's the back of it. Okay. Um, I'm going to back up just a little bit because this is like really intense, but super, super cool. And we're at 41. Wow. This isn't it. I had a feeling our last few, uh, readings were going to be really intense because I feel like there's so much for us to like really go through, but I'll tell you the number one thing that no matter what happens, if this does, you know, go to another one, I don't think it will, but it might, um, I trust you spirit. Do not forget that mantra. Okay. And they'll probably have me put it in the, I have a feeling they were having me put it in the title, but, um, you know, this is the transition and forgiveness phase. And I feel like spirit is asking us like, you know, are you ready? Are you really, really ready to be the star in your own life? Because it's in reverse, right? So, um, it is also number 17, which is when we add that together. Ooh, 17 for, I know that we have another tribe member who's 17 is like a really big deal for them. Um, but if you add it together, it's number eight and that's infinity. Okay. So, um, this is really powerful. And actually the moon is right after the star in the, in the, um, in the tarot and the sun's right after the moon. They just wanted me to point that out when I looked in the book. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So since they were in reverse, I am going to read it first. As the dust settles and the tower lies in ruin, you may find yourself alone in the dark. Reversed, the star card cautions that you have fallen deep in despair and cannot move forward. <clears throat> oh, throat chakra, because you're not speaking your truth or living your life that you want to. Signs of hope seem too good to be true and you feel more lost than ever. Take a moment to breathe and give yourself space to become reoriented. Um, let me tell you, I had such a fucking meltdown the other day, you guys. Like, through the whole, it's like, I went through the whole seven stages of death because it happened so fast. It was like one minute I'm like hanging out with Jesus, getting ready to do the last pick a reading I just did, which if you haven't watched it, it's really good. It's super powerful. And thank you all for your comments and your likes and telling me about it. I'm so grateful. You know, I felt that too. So I love you all so much. Every single one of those pick a readings were very, very powerful. You are all very powerful and I am blessed. I, I do feel so blessed to hold space for you. You are so, so powerful. Don't forget that. Um, but yeah, check that out. But yeah, that like, it was like, I, I here's me. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do the waiting. Give me a reading and the pick a reading. Oh, it's going to be a fun day. What's going to happen? And like, all of a sudden it was like, then I'm like hanging out with Jesus. And he's like, you're going to die today. And, and I was like, what, what, what? And I was like, did anybody get the license plate of that truck that hit me? Cause it was like, I didn't see that coming. And I knew that they told me one day that it would stop and that I wouldn't need, that I would be done doing, you know, that process or whatever. Um, and that's what I mean. Like, I don't know if that means I'm just going to be done doing moon cycle readings or if it means I'm just done in general, or if they're going to have me start a new channel at some point, or just like, I'm done. Like, I don't know. That's what's so cool and powerful. I am keeping Lula's life for a while, but I don't know how long that's going to happen either. Um, I've been trying to post on Baba's channel. Uh, I started that new channel for her and they're like, no, not yet. So I, I, I get it. I feel that right. Cause it almost feels like the hangman, right? It's in reverse the star card. It's like the hangman. And that's, it's like, we're like, how much longer do we have to be patient? How much longer do we have to wait? How much longer? And they're like, until you're done. And remember that our thoughts and our words have so much power. So if you're saying I can't do this or I can't blah, 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 then they'll keep giving it to you, to you, to you until you're like, oh, I've mastered this. I got this, you know? And if you have 
haven't mastered it, they'll give you another thing to learn, right? It's all in our ego and the way we approach it. So I didn't realize it until, because I was like, I need to get out into nature. I did all those readings on Tuesday and then Wednesday I was really tired. And so Thursday I was like, hey, let's go into nature before the weekend hits because where we live, it's super touristy and it's summer now and that's it. Forget it. Uh -huh. For the next three or four months, it's, it's kind of rough for us. Um, and so I just had a mental breakdown the entire day. And I didn't realize it until the next day that I literally went through like the seven stages of death. That's why all the things you see before you, I like had to, you know, have that energy around me. I had to talk with spirit. I had to go through it because I, I did feel like, what the fuck, man? Like I've been working really hard at this and my channel is growing. I don't understand what's happening. And they're like, you don't need to understand what's happening. Like you did your job. This is what you were meant to do. It's all good. So as far as I know, they're going to have me leave my channel up or leave this channel up. And at some point, I believe they're going to have me do some or all of some of the pick a readings. They're going to have me. Um, so I'll probably put out a video and, and let you guys know, like if you want to turn your turn your um, your notification bell off. Um, but they're going to have me like just put out a, like public a bunch of the readings. You know how I do links. They're going to have me put them public because and they're having me like do a lot of stuff like I don't they're not having me tell you everything yet but so just be prepared for that and then I feel like they're gonna I feel right I could be wrong but then I feel like they're gonna have me um also do like one last video to kind of like say like hey you guys like this is it I'm the magical medium and this is where I'm at right now I may or may not be back you know stay tuned subscribe you know if you you know whatever and it may just grow on its own I don't know I don't know. I really don't. But we have a lot of new people. And and thank you for those of you who've been commenting. It does make a difference. When you comment, it gives other people strength and courage to comment and share their story as well. Because we're not alone. And we're all here together. And that is what I've been doing and building this whole time is community of others like us. Bubba just got up and said hello. She's having some water. She's saying drink some water. Oh, thanks, Bubba. Um, but yeah, we've just been possessed and programmed to fear for so long and to be and to live fearfully that we, um, it's almost been difficult for us to, to see things from this perspective because now look at her. She is Aquarius, right? She's like, she's pulling, she's pouring is Aquarius, the star card. Let me see in my notes. Um, right. So she's, she's pouring, she's got so much abundance. She's got some to give. And I also feel like part of it is that I feel like, um, we're going into the energy. I have always felt that summer and winter are, are like study and reflection energies and spring and fall are our doing energies. So I wouldn't be surprised um, if things are going to happen really fast for a lot of us at the end of spring or summer, you know, excuse me, spring or fall, depending on where you fall um, in the northern or southern hemisphere of this tribe, 47, 49. Um, Bubba, you're going to have to wait just one minute. Please be patient. I'm going to roll here. Um, she's sitting at the door. She's like, I want to go out. Um, so I feel as if it's time for all of us to see how much abundance we have. Uh, I just put out a shorts recently about abundance and gratitude. And the more we are grateful for what we have right now and not for what we're coveting from the past or the future, the more we're just happy with where we are right now, happy and proud of ourselves for taking in these lessons and taking, you know, taking it in, taking it on, working through it, you know, not running away from it. This is when we realize we are divinely protected. We are always divinely protected. Thank you, Baba. Yes, can you wait just a little bit? Can you wait, Mama? If you can't wait, go to the door and I'll pause and let you out. I'll let you decide. <laughs> She's so smart. She's got her own thing going on. Um, but let me, I seriously, um, I'm like, I, I like to know those kind of things because it's always interest, interesting to me. And I thought I wrote them down somewhere. I have this really cool notebook of things. And I could have sworn I wrote it down. Let me entertain you. Hold on. I thought that's what it was. So very interesting. So work with the Aquarius energy. Also, it's an air energy. We are in Gemini right now. Gemini is an air energy. So it could be that you're working with an Aquarius or you're an Aquarius. Um, either way, channel the Aquarius energy. Also, ooh, ooh, how exciting. Thank you, Spishin. Spishin. I was going to say spirit and your mission. I got ahead of myself. 
Thank you, Spirit. And our mission, should we choose to accept it, is to find out where Aquarius is in our chart and work with that energy. It's going to be different for all of us because we all have every single sign in our chart. So there are many forms to find your birth chart for free online. Um, Cafeastrology.com is one of them. Bracca Goldsmith also has one. I highly recommend all of Bracca's work. She's just phenomenal. I just love every ounce of her even her dark murky that sometimes slips and i could see that she tries to hold back and i'm like give it to us braca give it to us it's okay we can take it um but we do love her loving pleiadian energy too the pleiadians are here and for all of our aliens we are all aliens if you don't feel normal here it's because you're not from here and that's okay and for those of you who know it's just a reminder and for those of you who are new i'm seeing a name with a j um oh that's interesting oh for my one friend you know who you are but also i just saw a j i just looked down and this looked like a really pretty cursive j oh now it looked like it turned to two c's so it could be c we could be dealing with a c let's see any other letters are we going to get anything else oh that looks like an f and i heard frank oh i love it spirit you're awesome oh it almost looks like she's holding on to it too so spirit's saying like don't hold on to things you know if you're holding on to things too tightly even her see how she's cradling she's cradling the water she could ho easily hold the handle and, and control it but she's cradling the water like a baby and look at that beautiful energy that bird above her I can't tell what kind of bird that is, but um, really beautiful. So um, I'm going to go to the flip side of the book. So, oh, okay. So we're reading the upright and then the reverse. So the upright, the star is the guardian of this deck, right? She represents hope and endless possibility. The star gently nurtures the flowers and the ibis, a steward. Oh, uh, the ibis. Oh, that's the bird. Yay. I-B-I-S. So work with that as well. That Look up ibis spirit medicine. A steward of creativity and magic. Remember, we were talking about birth and cycles. Yes, so it's time for a rebirth. This looks like an F for fertility, right? The rabbit. Look at the rabbit as fertility, not as fear. Look at everything in your life with fertility and abundance and know that spirit has your back. And when you're feeling darkness or when you're feeling somebody come for you, you just say out loud, I trust you, spirit. I trust you, spirit. I trust you, spirit. And anybody who would make fun of you or say something in your face, if you said that out loud, you could say it in your head. But if you feel strong enough to say it out loud, say it out loud. And if you know, that's when you know who your people are. I I start I got rid of not rid of that sounds really awful I'm sorry but I had to abolish certain people from my life because whenever they would say they love me and that I could be who I was and they supported what I did and who I was but whenever I would talk about it they would like make fun of it and I'm like you're making fun of it because you're uncomfortable I'm not uncomfortable I'm talking about it because I it's exciting to me and I want to know more about this world you know, so if somebody's making fun of it, it's because they can't face themselves, right? They, they don't see their inner star, right? They don't see their inner star. They're covered. They're shrouded upside down in darkness, right? So let your star shine. Don't let anyone ever, ever, ever dull your shine. So it says the star gently nurtures the flowers and the ibis, a steward of creativity and magic circles about her. After the tower has fallen and the light of dusk fades into night, the star is there to help you make your way through the dark. All you have to do is look up. Okay. Oh yeah. Sorry. We did read the reverse first. Thank you, spirit. Um, but so now she's upright. Do you hear that? I'm going to read it again. The star is the guardian of this deck. She represents hope and endless possibility. That's staying in the high vibration and believing and trusting that spirit has your back right? It's only in this repressed, possessed, programmed fear place that we live fearfully, but cut that shit out, you know, let it fucking go. That's to me too. That's the stern voice of the, of that, that grandmother energy, that strong divine feminine warrior. That's like, you can be soft and gentle. Yes. But also we must, you know, defend ourselves when needed. We don't have to, we can do it with loving energy and just push back love at people. But if it gets to a point, don't let anyone walk all over you either. You deserve to be, you know, the loving light being that you are. We are endless, right? What is a circle but endless? It's endless unless the circle is broken, right? Oh, look at this. Six of chalices. We've got a mermaid. It's so funny because I just heard merman merman you know from zoolander um so i feel like this wants to go and we want to be more over here by this little shell 
I feel like um, it's actually making me kind of sad because I feel like you're not allowed to be the mermaid you are, you know? So I'm covering chalices, but no, this is about cups, okay? And I'm going to put this here. Okay, all right. So interesting that we're talking about chalices and over here in the star, you know, we have a vessel that carries water. Water is our emotions. You know, that's why spirit had me start working with the moon cycles for the emotion. And I feel like, see how they're having me move my body so you can see the light of the card, right? And also they're asking me to move this over here. Because I feel like for some of you, the reason why you're in the waiting period is you're in the light, but like there is somebody or something that's a divine masculine that is blocking your way. And you notice that um, they almost look like it's like this is you, right? And it's almost like you look translucent, but it's like they're really the one that's translucent. And see how their hand is there? They're about to push through. Like they're about to push back and push forward and say, hey, you know what? I love you, but you can't talk to me like that. Or, hey, you know what? You may be my boss or, you know, my superior, but you can't talk to me like that. And um, for some of you, I feel like you're waiting in the background. Seriously, go watch the Wayne and Gibbous reading and go watch uh, the pick a reading because there was a lot. I feel like we're having a little bit of redundancy, not in a negative way, but just like for us to kind of see. And for those of you who've seen those readings, you know what I'm talking about, to kind of see the patterns, right? Um, and also interesting, alone, alone. But the only barrier is someone that, because think about it, if this wasn't, if this person wasn't a barrier, their hand would be like, they would be an embrace or they, this, this doesn't look like a super happy face to me. You know, that doesn't look like a super happy face. And I see that there's a fire that still burns between you. For those of you that this is like a romantic or lover. Um, but let me tell you something. I have had some of the best sex of my life with people I did not love. That doesn't mean it was wrong or bad. Uh, I loved them, but I was not in love with them. Or I thought I was in love with them. But I sometimes you can get like lust. That is real where you believe that you have this connection with somebody because you're like, oh, we have this. I, I had one of my relationships that we would, our, our sex would be so good that we'd like literally, and both of us were like kind of playboy, playgirl kind of thing. And, um, you know, many, many partners over, you know, whatever. And, uh, and would love to compare our war stories, you know, when we got together. That's why I never looked at them as like, a, a I always thought, oh, this is just going to be a lover. But we broke each other open and we would have sex and we would cry. And it was so beautiful. And I was like, if you're not the person for me, like, then I don't know who would be, you know what I mean? But then I started to realize, no, it was just that person that helped me break through that energy barrier that I had from loving myself or opening myself up fully. And that's what the tears were, is that we both opened ourselves up fully to another person. And we really were in love and we had a past life connection for sure. And maybe sometime in the future, I don't know. Um, you know, in some other life or some other place or some other world, or maybe, you know, that was it. I don't, I don't know. And I think for me, it felt like it was final. And I had moments where I could have like carried on with them. They came back into my life and I was like, oh my gosh, they must be the one. And then I was like, nope. And my hand pushed him away. And he was like, what? I'm here and everything's great. And we can finally be together and we've got money and everything's good. And you're good. I'm good. I'm like, mm, nope. It's not time. It's not, I'm sorry, this isn't the right thing. So, you know, you could be having that as well with somebody where, you know, the sex is really great, or maybe it's just a really good friendship, but they're like my first marriage, my, my first husband and I, we were best friends. Oh my gosh, I miss him terribly. But you know what? At the same time, we weren't lovers. We didn't have that, you know, and we didn't have that connection. We didn't have that thing. And um, I've learned so much about myself through all these relationships. And those of you who've been following me, you know, and my husband now who, you know, battled sex addiction and like all of these things. And I had to battle my own stuff. And the other day when I went through those seven stages of death, I realized what was happening is that um, I was losing control because this was the only thing I really had control over. 
because my outer world has been kind of hard. And we have been also blocked by a divine masculine energy um, that was not letting us flow, you know, and I was realizing like, okay, I see what's happening now. So the six of chalices upright says you are confronted with a moment of nostalgia. Memories of past joy strengthen your resolve and warm your heart. Old connections may be renewed and forgotten fondness rekindled. You remember the moments before your ambitions made it difficult to appreciate appreciate what you have. Interesting. And the reverse is memories of the past yield sorrow. Long buried regrets suddenly resurface to haunt you. You obsess and cling to the past, unable to live in the present moment. That is the possession. Remember, we were talking about that. The possession and repression and programming of fear. You know, did you ever have that where you're like, you know, um, especially being a triple Sag, like one of our things, one of the negative things of, of my, um, of Sagittarius is that, um, we are always think there's something better out there. We always think there's something better, someone better, something better out there. Um, you know, or we just settle for something because we're so fucking loyal, you know, that we're like, Oh no, I know that this is my person and blah, blah, blah. And we've, you know, done this and that, and I know it and I know it and I know it. And it's like, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Sometimes we have to push past the energies that are blocking us from our true path and it's haunting. It's, it's like you're living in your past. It's like for some of you, I'm getting from spirit, it's like your present is haunt, like your past is haunting your present. So you can't even live in the present or live in the now, like live in the now, man, because that's what's been helping me. I, what's changed the control for me was living in the moment and trusting spirit. And just in this last week, I've literally been saying it over and over and finally feeling it. All those times before I was like, nope, we're going to get this house. I know it. I can feel it. And I'm going to, and I was, because I used to be able to manipulate and make things happen for myself. And I could really push things with thank you notes and whatever. And I would get that thing that I really desired. But you know what? It was usually that thing that became the noose around my fucking neck. That thing I wanted so much, that person, that place, that thing, that job. I wanted it. And then it became the noose around my neck. So what is the noose around your neck? You know, because I feel like that's even though I know that's his collar, but right. It's like, you know, it's like their their noose is, is loose. They're fine. But what's this? That's an, uh, that's a, an aggressive energy. If you're putting your hand up, that's saying, stop in the name of love, right? Before you break my heart again, right? That person who's like, oh, I'm going to change or oh, blah, 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 or oh, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know, but you know the patterns, you see the patterns, you're in the light, right? Like you see it, you know, and you're like, I'm, I'm going towards the light now. You're like, I'm going to be in this light. And you don't need to pull, push that negative energy back, right? Because it's here for you. You worked through it. And this says, memories of the past yield sorrow. You obsess and cling to the past, unable to live in the present moment. You must make peace with your relationship with your past. There is no recapturing the playfulness of youth, but you might still find ways to access the sense of joy. And it's on page 83. And when I looked down, it was 102.36. So it was also 12.36. And that's also number 12. Ooh. Okay, so let me just see. Do we have any more messages? I think that's it, you guys. I feel like that's it. Are there any more messages, Spirit? Do we have any more messages that you want to say from anywhere else? Do we want to have any ancestors or anyone that wants to come through and speak to anyone in particular? Do we have any? No? Okay. We did have that in the picker reading. We had more ancestors come through. So um, again, if you um, haven't checked that out, go and find it on my channel, on this channel. Okay, you guys, let me see if they want me to do, sometimes they have me do this last minute. You guys know I do this little last minute thing where they have me put them in order. Okay, this is it. It's just like this. It's just like this. And also, um, they're having it lay flat because I was just going to fix it. And they're saying, no, they're having it lay flat because they want you to see how you like what you're doing to yourself. Here's the healing energy of the amethyst. But it's just you're not getting anywhere. Part of why this is happening is because of this blockage. And I guarantee you when this is out and when this is gone, you won't need this anymore. And you're just going to be flying high. Right? Flying high like an eagle to the sea. 
or like an ibis in this case. <laughs> I have been seeing a lot of eagle energy. Oh, and I looked down, I saw 14 too, and also the number five. So um, the last thing they want me to say is number five, we do have in, I have in this book here, I want to give you some key words. So if you can indulge spirit and myself, just take a few deep breaths and close your eyes. <sighs> Cough it out, speak your truth. Don't deny it. If it hits, it hits. And whatever hits when you hear the words, okay? These are the words that go along with change and transformation, transition and forgiveness. Obstacles. Difficulty. Conflict. Loss. Lack of faith. Imbalance. Change. And the number seven also came in. Keep your eyes closed. We're going to read the number seven. How do these words hit with you now, Spirit says? And angel number 1520, you don't have to write it down. It's the number eight, and it's about infinity. So seven is about hard work, ethics, reflection, discipline, uncomfortable growth. Remember, nothing grows in the comfortable decisions, hard decisions, struggle, responsibility, thinking first, and knowledge. And know that eight is already in your orbit right now. We're in the seventh moon cycle, but eight is right around the corner. And you know what that is? Transformation, progress, balance, resolution. Seven, after the struggle of seven, the mastery Four plus four, four equals eight. And remember the four, we spoke about that. Okay, you guys, you can open your eyes. Until next time, take really good care of yourselves and each other. And I'm so excited. We only have one more reading together. Ah, but look out for the shorts, you know, in the tabs above their shorts. And, um, you know, go ahead and subscribe to Lula's Life. I don't know what's going to happen over there or what, you know, whatever. But um, I don't know. I'm just, we're, we're here together. That's all I know. So don't forget to keep saying the mantra, I trust you, spirit. I trust you, spirit. I trust you, spirit. I trust you, spirit. Until next time. Blessed be. Oh, I love you. I trust you.